This is what I experienced minutes after setting foot in my family's hometown. We literally just got here. We went through the first military checkpoint and a bunch of soldiers stopped us, started yelling at us. I'm in the old city of Hebron in the occupied West Bank, a place that once bustled with life. But I'm about to see what Israel's occupation and settlers have done to the heart of this city. And to the people who live here. I'm a Palestinian-American journalist, and I've spent much of my career reporting on the occupied territories. But Hebron, one of the West Bank's largest cities, is also my roots. My father was born and raised here. I've returned to learn how the occupation has decimated his beloved hometown, a place he hasn't been back to in years. Well, I had a mixed feeling, uh, nostalgia with anger, despair over despair, what can I say? I know it's really hard for him to see this, and so it's emotional for me. So we're officially on our way to Hebron. My team and I are going to Hebron's old city, which is ground zero of Israeli apartheid. Today, 33,000 Palestinians live in this part of Hebron, which is under full Israeli military control and fragmented by checkpoints, military outposts, and around 1,000 Israeli settlers who live here in violation of international law. But before we get into all of that, let me back up. It wasn't always like this. This is my dad. He was born in Hebron in 1947. He lived up the hill from the old city, where his father and uncle owned a quarry. The year after my dad was born, Israel was established in what Palestinians refer to as the Nekba, or catastrophe. That's because hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were expelled from their homes to clear the way for the creation of a Jewish state. But the West Bank, including Hebron, fell under the control of Jordan. My dad was 19 in June of 1967, when Israel captured the West Bank, Gaza, East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights, and began a military occupation that still has no end in sight. My dad was in college in Jordan at that time, so he wasn't in Hebron to witness that or to see how Jewish settlers took over parts of the old city. A few years later, he moved to the U.S. for graduate school. I was born and raised in San Francisco and grew up hearing my dad reminisce about his childhood, like how he raised chickens and rabbits on the hill as he watched the vibrant city below. When my family would travel to Palestine in the summers, my dad couldn't come because of work. Now, even though he's retired, he says he doesn't want to return because he refuses to be humiliated by Israeli soldiers. He's only been back to Hebron three times. But I'm returning to see with my own eyes what has become of the city that made my father and me who we are today. And that all begins with me actually getting there. It's only about 20 miles from Ramallah where we're starting out. But we can't, as Palestinians, access parts of the main north-south highway because that's reserved exclusively for cars with Israeli license plates. So here's another checkpoint. Instead, we have to take narrower roads and cross through several Israeli military checkpoints. There's another checkpoint. That means it takes much, much longer to get there. We're finally in Hebron. I'm sure my dad knows these streets inside and out, and he used to walk all over here as a child, so this is literally retracing his footsteps, but it's very different now than, than when he grew up. Today, many parts of the city are off limits to Palestinians. All right, gonna go through. Because I'm Palestinian, I'm not allowed to enter parts of the old city, so I'm meeting former Israeli soldiers who, I hope, will help me access my family's hometown. Hi, how are you, Ori? Nice to meet you, I'm Dina. Ori and Joel are with the Israeli anti-occupation group Breaking the Silence. They used to serve in the Israeli army, but now they give tours of Hebron to expose the reality of how Israel treats Palestinians. Come, come here, come here, come here. But before they could even start showing me around, this happened. 
היא אזרחית ארצות הברית והיא עיתונאית, כן? רק שתדעו. היא אזרחית ארצות הברית והיא עיתונאית. אין שום בעיה, הוא צילם עמדה ביטחונית, הוא צריך למחוק את הסרטונים האלה. אני לא צילמתי את העמדה, צילמתי רק אותה. לא, צילמת את העמדה. זה לא משנה, אם היא עמדה ליד העמדה, אתה מוחק את הסרטונים. דבר ראשון, אתה מפריע לנו בעבודה, בוא תעמוד שם עם המצלמה. דבר ראשון. עכשיו דוחף אותי. יופי, דוחף אותו, כרגע הוא מפריע לי בעבודה. My Palestinian film crew, who have the proper credentials, are sadly used to experiencing this kind of nationalistic harassment and taunting. So I've been in the old city for about five minutes and we were already stopped by... We literally just got here and a bunch of soldiers stopped us, started yelling at us started harassing my cameraman. They just asked to see our IDs. I showed my US passport. To all of a sudden have like six or seven armed Israeli soldiers just swarm you. It's honestly really upsetting that this is how you get welcomed to your own home city. The former soldiers I'm spending the day with say this is a typical scene. When you consider the fact that uh, they grew up in Israeli society, they have uh, education and uh, media and a political system, all of those elements are telling them that Arabs are scary, you know, Palestinians are bad. And then they get an opportunity when they're in the army, uh, they, they have power in their hands and it's not surprising that they use it. Finally, the soldiers give us back our IDs. Let's continue, right? The, it's, a, it's a very classic demonstration of one of the elements of the occupation, which is complete arbitrary, right? And every soldier in the occupied territories has the authority on his own decision to detain anyone for three hours. Yeah? So we were not delayed here for three hours, and we are going to continue our tour, obviously, yeah, but, but it's but, an example. But what a way to start the day. I'm about to learn that what I just experienced is nothing compared to what the Palestinians who live here go through every day. This is Fadl, who has lived in this home his whole life. In the 1980s, Israel set up this checkpoint in front of his house. Fadl now has to check in every time he leaves or enters his own home. يعني بنت متجوزة مي مسموح لها تيجي جوزها لا. واو. وهلا لما بتمرق إيش لازم تفرجي؟ اسمه ورقم هويتي. وأنت بتقدر تمشي هون مش ممنوع. بس لحديتي. واو. هون ممنوع. آه. Fadl isn't alone. Thousands of other Palestinians in Hebron are also forced to pass military checkpoints just to go home. The military also bans Palestinians from using certain streets, as Ori shows me. On that street over there. Palestinians are allowed to walk and open businesses, but not allowed to drive. The yellow street on the map is a street where Palestinians are only allowed to walk, not allowed to drive, and not allowed to open businesses. The streets that we're heading towards are mostly sterile, yeah? meaning that no Palestinian in the whole wide world can walk on those streets. If you do one step over here, no Palestinians are allowed here. If we take one step here, yeah, here Palestinians are allowed. And I don't know any other word to call this than apartheid. All these restrictions help Israel maintain its hold on Hebron, but they're also in place to protect Israeli settlers, and the ones in Hebron are known for being among the most violent in all of the occupied West Bank. Our uh, order in Hebron is protect the Jewish settlers, right? We don't have uh, an order protect Palestinians if, uh, if settlers are harassed. The them. soldiers never protect the Palestinians. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not in our order. This is kind of a common sight here in the old city. Um, there's a Palestinian family that lives at the end of this alleyway. Above them is an Israeli settlement. And because the settlers throw garbage down at them, they have to put these nets here to protect them. The family at the end of the alley is the Siddhars. Just a few weeks before I arrived to Hebron, nearby settlers accused their 13-year-old daughter Salwa of picking a knife up off the ground. Oh. 
אבל שלא מלך. הכל זה אני עכשיו לוקח. התייעץ לי. יאללה, תביא הזיכרון. תביא הזיכרון. אמנוע. עדת סעלם אחאומה, למה פלטוני עדת סעלם ופלטוני יעלם. אני כתיר סעת למה פלטוני ואחאומה. בתחפי יעתק לוקי כמן מרה? אני חסית אינו, ואני לא מחסית אינו, דמי תקלוני בנוס הליל. So we're standing here and I'm talking to her in front of her home and every time we hear a noise she looks up and I asked her are you afraid the settlers are throwing something down at you and she said yeah Just talking to her, it's really you don't feel safe at all. Like it's not, it's not a life that people should or can accept. So how did Hebron end up feeling like a prison for its people? After the Israeli occupation began in 1967, Hebron was among the first places Jewish settlements were built. This illegal land grab captured international attention. Now there's pressure for large-scale Jewish resettlement. Own shops have closed for good, and more than 1,000 Palestinian families have moved away from Hebron city center. They have decimated the old city Israel has. And it's really unfortunate to see. I mean, this should be a thriving, bustling marketplace right now, and it's completely empty. Look at these empty homes. Used to be the prime real estate in the West Bank. Here, her, oh, she's harass, she's, she's, she's harassing a Palestinian right now, just because so he's sweeping. What she, he's what, sweeping. What we can she... just see here. The Palestinians clean the street. They just uh, tried to clean around the military post to do their job. Yeah, because this is still a street where Palestinians are allowed to walk. And this settler uh, uh, woman told them this settler woman told them that uh, they, they, they shouldn't enter, they shouldn't enter there, they, should, they cannot enter this, even though it's a military post. Don't, please don't touch our camera. That's wild. The settler woman got mad at the Palestinian for sweeping the street and then she attacked us and our cameras and tried to block us from filming. Many of Hebron's settlers moved here from the United States. Sadio came from Brooklyn a few years ago. Does it bother you that you're living somewhere so heavily militarized where Palestinians that have been here for generations are getting kicked out of their houses and can't walk on certain streets? So, um, I'll ignore the use of the term Palestinian since there is no such nation or people. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, militarization is a thing happening all across the world. I'm not up to anything and nobody's uh, uh, invading my space for no reason. I don't care. <laughs> يعني بعدوا بتوفوا بضربوا البنت بتخاف تنزل المرة بتخاف تنزل أنا بلا كمان يوم أخوي بحجار صوان هون انتفخ مين رمى الحجار المستوطن So why do you give these tours? It's extremely important to show people what the occupation looks like because this word is very vague for most people right occupation and when you see here, when you walk on those segregated streets, you cannot ignore the reality. And I believe that it's my responsibility as someone who, who took, it, took part in it. The minimum that I can do is to try and show people what I was sent to do. I believe that any decent human being who will see this will want this to end. So we're going to attempt to enter Shuhada Street right now. Um, no Palestinians are allowed to be on that street, only Israelis and foreigners. I'm going to enter on my U.S. passport. Of course, I'm originally Palestinian, so we'll see how that goes. While all of Hebron's old city has been affected by the occupation, the most striking example might be Shuhada Street. It used to be the city's most important, vibrant thoroughfare. My dad went to middle school on this road, and his family owned shops here. But in the years following the 1994 massacre, Palestinians have been banned from walking on this street, even if they live on it. So the Israeli military welded these Palestinian doors shut. 
this is welding. We actually welded the shut their doors. We send Israeli soldiers to weld shut those front doors uh, of these families while, while everyone else who is not a Palestinian can walk freely. This video shows what it takes for one Palestinian woman to leave her home. She climbs her roof and scales back down to the ground to exit on a back street where she is allowed to be. But if you're a Jewish settler, you can walk out in the front, in your front of your Look at front us. door. Yeah. Look at us. Not only if you're a Jewish settler. Everyone who is not a Palestinian. <laughs> This is the old central bus station in Hebron and they've turned it into a new military base that's under construction there and behind it is a new settlement. Over here we can walk and have a look on the old jewelry market. This whole thing is a settlement. This is how absolutely devastated it is right now. Settlers came and just ravaged the whole place and destroyed it. This is the old fruit and vegetable market. It was here and now, now what does the sign say, Ori? Now this is a settlement. The old city has suffered everywhere you look. There's just deserted shops, deserted homes, destruction, broken windows. And in the middle of it all, there's like schools and, and settlements and Israeli settlers just living their lives with the full protection of the military. You know, one thing that's really striking being here is how incredibly silent it is. The only sound you hear is the flutter of these little Israeli flags above. I keep thinking about how, you know, I directly descend from here. Not only is it like sad on just a human level, but there's a very personal element to this street as well. I don't blame my dad for not wanting to come back because it's that messed up. So I'm trying to piece together exactly where my dad grew up. You know, I've pieced together that that's where my family's home is. And the view is of a bunch of Israeli flags and a military outpost on the, on the hill over there. And in between them, the cemetery where my grandparents are buried and the home that my father grew up in. So, man, I wonder if he's awake right now. I should FaceTime him. Hi, Baba. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I want to show you. I think this is where you grew up. Is this? This is Shohada Street. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is Shohada. There's nobody here except for some soldiers and a few settlers. It's a total ghost town. During the days, you see the people in the market, and, uh, and at night, I could see the singing and the dancing. And it was like the, the heart of the city. Sad. So sad. It's so sad. Uh, um, well, I had a mixed feeling, uh, nostalgia with anger. This is the old vegetable market. Does this look familiar to you? Exactly. I used to go sometimes in the morning in the summer to buy cactus pear. This is uh, despair over despair. What can I say? How does it make you feel uh, showing your dad? I don't know. I feel really sad. Like, he grew up right there. You know, his parents are buried right there. and. I know it's really hard for him to see this, and so it's emotional for me. My dad wanted to talk to Ori. Uh, hello, my friend. Hi, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm glad you are for uh, uh, peace. <laughs> when counting on people like you to um, expose <laughs> the lie. I really hope you can be here and visit your childhood uh, uh, home uh, at some point. Really, really hope. You know what I do? <laughs> I just keep looking at the pictures all over and over and over again. I am uh, physically in San Francisco, but spiritually and emotionally always in Hebrew. I'm curious, how did, how did you feel watching me talk to my dad and then speaking to him yourself? Like I said, responsible, that this is what the place that I grew up in, that I was so proud of when I was a child. This is what we're actually doing to people. And it feels uh, horrible to feel that. What most haunts you and your conscience about what you did in your time as a soldier? For me, it's the routine way we control the Palestinians, right? A Palestinian can wake up in the morning 
and not know if he will be at work on time, go to sleep, not know if soldiers will invade his home. We basically control the most simple and basic elements of life. It's designed to break down the population of Palestinians and show them who's in charge and yeah, humiliate we, them on a daily basis. Exactly. How, how can we make 2.5 million Palestinians in the West Bank to feel that they cannot lift their head up? We will make them uh, understand that we control their lives. The segregated roads and the settlements are so forth and so forth. They exist all around the occupied territories. And military activity, home invasions, patrols, digital surveillance, they exist here and they exist all over the West Bank. The difference in Hebron is that in a very short walk, we can see examples of all of it. All of it. All of we it. We saw all of it. It was a heavy day, but before it ended, I wanted to visit my father's childhood home. As I stood on the roof overlooking the 